Hi guys, I'm RSF. Welcome to my vlog, Smart Money with RSF. And today we're going to be talking about friends and money. Now recently, I went to Dubai on a girls' holiday with my best friends, Nana, Nadine, Maria. And it was amazing. But I also know that when people say Dubai and girls' trip in the same sentence, people start to conjure up images of allergies and unidentified sponsors. It's more like that too. Anyway, this trip was awesome, but I had an aha moment and that I wanted to share about financial independence and a few hacks about how to plan a trip like this with your friends. So, even if I know what financial independence means, obviously, I wrote a book about it. It hits me on this trip that it would have been so nice if one of my toasters had stepped up and said, I said, it's your birthday. Take spending money. Go and buy yourself a birthday you know, present when you get to Dubai. But as much as I hinted and hinted and hinted, my birthday is on March 19th, nobody stepped up. But it, it did get me thinking about something, about the fact that imagine if I couldn't come on this trip because I had made my financial plans around somebody else's pocket or generosity. That was a big aha moment for me because I was like, wow, financial independence is not, I don't need a man. Financial independence is more about making plans um, according to the things that your income can support. So which brings me to my first hack. Tie your splurges to your financial goals. Now, in the last year and a half, I haven't really had to spend my own money on trips because I've been fortunate enough to, for the work that I do to attract brands that will pay for those trips for me, which is great. But this time, I had to go back to my reverse, to my old ways of tying my splurges to my um, financial goals. What do I mean by that? I like to travel. Traveling is a big ticket item, right? It's expensive. It's often expensive to do. So how do I make this work within the money that I earn? I like to set targets for myself like, you know what, if I hit this sales target or if I hit this profit target or if I close this um, contract out, then I will deserve to splurge on a holiday. So obviously, holidays are already planned out. This is a financial goal. And as you're hitting different milestones, so for example, if I say, if I make 5 million, then I can put 20% of that, that's 1 million towards this um, travel goal. So tying your splurges to your financial goals help you hustle harder, and it makes the splurge the incentive for you having worked hard, right? Number two, like I said, I went on this trip with three of my best friends. So understand something that's very key. Know that we all have different pockets, right? People don't like respecting themselves. <laughs> and it's quite, you know, unfortunate. See, the reality is our friendship circles are a pillar of our support system. But our friendship circles also have a tendency to affect our spending patterns. So the people that you're friends with, right, you might start spending the way that they spend. But where, because of a lack of self-awareness, but I will get to that. But where most people sort of miss it is we have to recognize that at every point in time, all of us are not on the same um, financial schedule. We, some people might be up, some people might be down, and you know, vice versa over a period of time. Now, I, f I hear girls saying things like, mm, I have to buy this hair or I have to buy this shoe because if I don't buy it, my friends, they'll be tensioning me what, because they've bought their own. And we shouldn't be in relationships like that. Like, your friends should inspire you to work harder, you know, to set goals and everything. And it's okay for everybody to be in different places because your relationship is not based off of materialistic things. It's based off of shared values and shared experiences. For example, I wear my 22-year friendship. I'm sure the people who follow me on Instagram will recognize this hashtag. Um, hashtag 22 years of friendship. Hashtag besties for life. I've known my friends, my best friends, since I was 10 years old, right? So our relationship is not based off of our financial um, circumstances because all of us have different financial goals, different financial obligations, different financial circumstances, and we respect that, right? 
I will not do something that is out of my budget because my friend is doing it. Because we're not friends because of our, because of what we have or the material things that we have. We're friends because we went to school together. We've gone through things like planning weddings, planning baby showers, um, marriages failing, businesses failing, child loss. You know, the good and the bad, the, as in the ups and the downs, we've been through all of that stuff together. And that's what bonds us, not whether we carry Chanel bag or wear Jimmy Choo shoes. And I find that a lot of relationships these days are based off of social status. Like, so I've heard ridiculous things like, oh, please, I can't be friends with this person. They are not on my level. What does that even mean, right? Um, we, so you need to be asking yourself, why am I friends with my friends? And how are my friendship circles affecting the way that I spend or my spending patterns? Or should they affect the way that um, I spend? My friends all like nice things. I like the good life so much, but we like nice things in different ways. I'll explain that in my final point. The third hack that I wanted to say was plan ahead, right? A lot of planning goes into a trip like this. So... We're planning for my birthday is in March. We're planning for this for six months because we had to put, you know, schedules in place. We had to start putting money aside towards things like tickets, um, hotel, all of that stuff. So plan ahead. If you, you can't just wake up and say, oh, I'm going to do, well, some people can, but most people can't just wake up and, and say, oh, I'm going to Dubai, as in I'm just going to um, spend money like that. A lot of planning you know, is involved in making a big ticket purchase like that. Um, and then also, everybody in a team, I like to say my friends and my team, um, should have different roles. And maybe we're just lucky like that, but I'll explain. Me, I'm the visionary. I'll be the one that has the big idea. You guys, let's go to Dubai for my birthday. And then I would bully everybody and, you know, push everybody until, you know, we make it happen. But the details, I find that Nana and Maria are better at that. Nadine is ginger. She's the hype man. Now, Nana will spend months looking at, like, tickets for um, flight tickets and finding promos to jump on and take advantage of. For example, our tickets from, Lon from Lagos to Dubai to London was cheaper than a ticket from Lagos to Dubai in the same time period. I don't know how she did that, but she found like a promo. Now the thing, those things, you know, I wouldn't want to do. I like somebody else to do it for. I'm not going on this girl's trip. It would have been one who from D DMP Travels that, that um, would do it for me. And we'll go back and forth until we find the right, you know, price that's value for money. Two, Maria is the itinerary queen. Like, oh my God, we did amazing activities. Things that were in everyone's budget. So what she would do is, on day one, we're going to do dinner in the desert. This is how much it will cost per person. Or, for example, she would find out like per person rates. So on average, how much do people spend in a restaurant like Nuzaret um, or Koya? And she would give us options and say, oh, you know, on the first day we can do this. This is how much it's going to cost per person. And then we'll all vote for which activity you know we wanted so it was the plans were made with everybody's budget in mind right another one was on my birthday we got a boat people were like oh my god you're balling because it looked expensive but it was actually 500 dollars for four hours for four of us so that's about 100 and something dollars each as in for such an amazing you know experience like that listening to music just chilling on a boat it was amazing it cost $500. Now, Maria is also the queen negotiator. While we were in Lagos, she'll call um, all the different tour operators and say, please, we want this. Okay, if it's expensive at this time, would like to do it at this time. Can you give us a discount? She was never shy to ask for discounts. But basically, for the whole trip to work, it took a lot of planning and putting everyone's budget into consideration. Now, the, my final point is self awareness the issue with going on a girl's trip or in friendships is usually that people individually don't know themselves well enough like i find that people are not self-aware enough because we don't know what we like what is important to us 
We spend our money according to what society has told us is important to us. For example, I always say this all the time, that being smart with my money is not about deprivation, it's about spending intentionally on things that I love and cutting expenses ruthlessly on things I don't care about. So it took me a while to understand that. I love the good life and my friends love the good life, but we love the good life in different ways. If we had the exact same amount of money and we had to um, pick only three things that we could all do, I guarantee you it will all be different. So for, when we went on this trip, me, I love experiences. Those are things that matter the most to me. I want to go on a boat with my friends. It's a vibe. It's something that I always remember. I want to go to Nikki Beach and chill and drink and eat, you know, amazing food. I want to go to the restaurant. That is what my own, see, if you put me with good food, good wine, my friends, and we can have fantastic conversation, that means more to me than, you know, buying shoes. So, for example, Nena and Maria, there was a gold souk spirit that overwhelmed them. <laughs> and they, were, they spent a lot of time in the gold souk. Um, Nadine loved the mall. Now, I, would, I could accompany them a few times. However, even if I'm an extrovert, so I love people, I'm also an introvert, and I love to spend time with myself. So there were times where I'll stay in the hotel room by myself, reading a book, listening to music, watching movies, and eating. Yeah. Because I just needed that alone time. And again, I wanted to spend my money intentionally on experiences um, as opposed to um, things. So know who you are. Be self-aware so that people are not pulling your money into different directions. And be confident in it. I not get, is I not get, my friends know, they can call me on a weekend and say, oh girl, let's go to this, and I'm like, ugh, it's not my budget, so I blow my budget for this week, I can't, unless you're paying. And I can trust that, because we're not friends based off of who is financially up or who is financially down, we're friends based off of shared values and shared experiences, that doesn't matter. I hear people talking about how, ah, I don't want them to tension me, I don't want this, this person is tensioning me. Nobody should be able to tension you. Just do you, right? Like, do what you want to do. And what, if someone is, you know, living a great life, you should tap into their blessing and say, ah, one day I'll get to this point. It's something to look forward to as opposed to something to be jealous of. So I hope this helps. I look forward to your comments in the bottom and subscribe. We're having a Money Conversations with RSA event on the 21st of April. So if you want to come and hang out with me, register in the link below. Let's talk about money.